So if you haven't been keeping up, I'm a waitress working at a diner. For the past six years, I've encountered strange things happening, and I'm going to tell you about them. After the Cerberus incident, or as I called it, the three-headed dog incident, we have the Harpy incident. Why I say Harpy incident instead of Harpy and Hag incident was because it was the Harpy's fault, not the Hag's fault. Well, I suspect it wouldn't have happened if the hags hadn't shown up, but I think that counts as victim blaming and we don't victim blame anyone or anything. It's against the rules of the diner. Anyway, I let the harpies in the diner where they made themselves comfortable at the bar counter. Loretta looked through the slot where Jay and I place orders and made a sound of discomfort. <laughs> okay. I guess today is just not her day with the Cerberus and then the harpies. If our boss Matt didn't think she could handle it, then he just wouldn't have hired her. Loretta's a strong woman. She had been kidnapped when she was eight, and two years later escaped a man who sold her for drugs in Mexico. She went back home, found her parents had died, and came here to California to live with her grandparents, who put her through a lot of therapy. Like I said, she's a strong woman. If she can survive her ordeal from when she was eight, then she'll survive six harpies. Anyway, enough rambling. I uh, placed the menus in front of the harpies, and I started by saying, do you ladies need any... Ooh. The nearest harpy reached up with her leg and used her talons to open the menu. Uh, never mind, I muttered. I looked towards Jay, who had been cleaning up the Cerberus' mess. He looked at the harpies, did a double take, and went back to cleaning the table. And what do you ladies want to drink? I asked, looking back at our customers. We'll take water, the harpy in the middle said. From their stay here, I managed to get their names. The one in the middle is named Iolanthe. To make it short, here's a list of their names starting from the one farthest from the door. Calliope, Tassia, Cipriana, Alianthe, Ophelia, and Vasilia. I was pouring them water from a pitcher when Calliope asked in a raspy voice, Excuse me, dear, but what exactly is a baked strawberry shortcake? And I'm like, oh, it's a strawberry shortcake in pie form. Therefore, a uh, baked strawberry shortcake. It it's also our boss's idea of a joke. Um, there's a cartoon character named Strawberry Shortcake, and he thought it would be hilarious if she was baked. You know, like getting stoned. <laughs> I was stoned once, said Ophelia in a raspy voice. It was the most unpleasant feeling. She's not talking about that type of stoning, Ophelia said Tasia in a gravelly voice. I was trying to figure out how Ophelia had gotten rocks thrown at her or who had thrown them at her. Maybe it was from some kids who had mistaken her for an abnormally large bird or something. Anyway, I'll get the baked strawberry shortcake, said Calliope, smiling. I nodded and wrote it down. I took the rest of their orders and their menus. They were polite when ordering, since they were thanking me and calling me dear. <laughs> no joke, they were some of the most politest people I've ever served. I wouldn't mind having them come by again. Loretta got to cooking, and I noticed that we were short on staff. So I'm like, where's Jay? I hadn't noticed that he already finished cleaning up the table. And Loretta's like, oh, he's out back, as she's mixing ingredients together, and she's like, something about feeding Sasquatch? And I'm like, oh my gosh. It doesn't take that long to give Sasquatch food. I go out back worrying that maybe Sasquatch kidnapped Jay or if the rain bird came back for seconds or something. It turned out that Jay was actually just fine. He was talking to someone on his phone and messing around with the garlic necklace as he did so. Hey douchebag, get off your butt and help Loretta and I make food for the harpies! I shouted at him. He turned around and flipped me off. I flipped him off too and went back inside to help Loretta. That's just how our friendship works. We affectionately insult each other and often greet each other with hey douchebag or some variant of that, instead of the whole one-armed hug thing. When Loretta first saw us interacting with each other, she thought that we hated each other, but soon she just realized that that's just how our friendship works. It was a few minutes later when Jay walked in. He set the garlic necklace aside and started washing his hands and just goes, Greg says that you're loud when you shout. So I'm just like, <laughs> good. And then he goes, and Roxana says that you shouldn't call another woman a harpy, just refer to them as douchebags. <laughs> and then Loretta laughed at that, and she's all gender equality. <laughs> Roxana is a pseudonym for Jay and Craig's girlfriend. Like I had said, Jay is in a polyamorous relationship with Roxana and Craig. 
Their names have been changed for privacy reasons, and the fact that polyamory relationships is frowned upon for some reason. As long as it's consensual, right? As we made the food, Jade had gone to refill the harpy's cups with a water pitcher. He's all, sorry for the wait, we just have one cook right now and the three of us are making your food. And Cipriana is like, it's alright, sweetie, you three dears can take all the time you need, we're not at any rush. And then Tasia started, except for... But then Cipriana said, don't bring them into it, they're neutral. Loretta and I looked at each other at that. Neutral? What does that mean? I worked here for six years and this was the first time I had heard one of us being described as neutral. Jay, are you neutral? Asked Vasilia. So Jay's like, uh, I suppose so. I'm also pansexual, so... And so all the harpies go, ooh. I wanted to facepalm at Jay saying what his sexuality was to complete strangers. My niece is a lesbian, says Calliope cheerfully. And Jay's like, that's cool. Do you need any more water? Iolanthe's like, yes, sweetie. A few minutes later, Jay returned to refill the water pitcher and he's like, we're neutral. What the heck does that mean? And Loretta's like, I think they mean that we're like a neutral country, as she flipped the hamburger patties. Like at a time during war, we don't engage in combat like a neutral country. Our diner can't be invaded. Well, great. We're having a supernatural war and we're in the middle of it. I looked out the window that was in the back door to see if I could see any sign of a war going on, but I couldn't see anything. After a while, the food was ready and Jay and I delivered the food to the harpies, who all thanked us and called me dear and called Jay sweetie. It was interesting watching the harpies use their legs and talons to eat. Hmm. Of course, everything had to go to hell when the four hags walked in. Well, hell is an exaggeration. At first, I thought they looked like elderly women, which confused me because it was nearing 2 in the morning, and I don't know if there are any elderly women who get up at 2 in the morning. I grab some menus as the women found a booth to sit at, and I hear Ophelia hiss, hags, under her breath. As I neared the women, or hags, I noticed that they seemed tense and were glancing at the harpies. Either they were tense at the sight of the harpies, or maybe they were tense at the sight of me. And I'm just thinking, I'm not that off-putting. Like, okay, I wear black nail polish and black lipstick and eyeliner that made me look like I joined my chemical romance as the Black Parade. But I like to think I'm a friendly blonde woman. I passed the menus to the hags and took out my notepad. Can I get you women something to drink while you look at the menu? So they go, do you sell Bloody Marys? I learned that one's name is Mara. No, sorry, I say. The only alcohol we sell is the drunken blonde. And then one of them named Callie goes, you got anything that looks like blood? So I think about it and I'm like, we have strawberry soda. And then one of them was like, oh, we'll take that. I learned that her name is Babs, which I suspect is a nickname. Okay, I'll be right back with your drinks, I said. And then the last one named Addie is all like, yes, yes. I nodded and went to go get their drinks when I heard Callie hiss. Don't do anything, we're on neutral territory. Neutral territory? I wasn't sure what that had meant or what they were talking about. I know what Loretta said about neutrality in wars, but I couldn't be sure if they're at war. Well, I brought them their drinks and I noticed the air seemed heavy with tension. It was one of the most uncomfortable feelings I felt. Discounting the stares that I had received at school when I was 15 after the only party I had gone to. I shook the memories back and took the hag's orders. And then Addie's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, the feather brains. And Callie's like, oh, those feather brains will do that to you. Looking disdainfully at the harpies who turned to glare at them. I frowned at feather brains, which I knew was supposed to be derogatory towards the harpies. No, it's not them, I said, just remembering something very unpleasant from when I was younger. 
Callie nodded, but I suspected she didn't really care about my trauma, which was fine because I wasn't going to unload my baggage on her anyway. I took their order and attached it to the wheel for Loretta to get to, and then I walked into the kitchen where Jay and Loretta were already washing their hands. Neutral territory? I whispered. Loretta shrugged and was like, you guys know a lot more than I do. But I never heard about us being neutral territory, I whispered as I went to wash my hands. After we cooked the food, I helped Jay deliver it. The harpies were still there and just staring at the hags. And one of the hags, Addie, is like, now why did you do that to your face, young man? And he just says, because I wanted to, while shrugging. Addie reached up and was going to touch Jay's lip ring, but he stepped back. Uh, please don't touch it. And then one of the harpies stood up and shrieked, No decency! It was Iolanthe, and as she stood up, she's just like, No shame, no manners! And then Callie, one of the hags, is like, Butt out, wing wench. We have just as much rights as you do. And then, uh... Some eggs Benedict went flying and hit Addie in the face. I was stunned at the waste of food. I turned to look at Jay, who looked like he was trying not to burst out laughing. I looked at the harpies, who were not looking happy. The hamburger hit Ophelia in the face. All right, all right, I shouted. My demand went in one ear and out the other as Cipriana threw some fries, which accidentally hit me in the face. I was stunned and <laughs> admittedly a little amused. And Sabrina is all, sorry, dear. That was when the food fight broke out. I know that's not terrifying. Unless you count the waste of food as terrifying. Jay and I backed away from the line of food throwing. I was holding onto Jay's arm, more out of fear of what might happen. It was obvious the hags and the harpies despised each other. Then a wind picked up in the diner and a bar counter stool was blown towards us. Jay and I ducked and we went into the kitchen. And Loretta's like, what the heck is going on out there? There was a loud banging noise and I jumped and turned toward the door. I really didn't want to know what was going on out there, but napkins and utensils blowing in through the slot in the wall and the loud shrieking gave me a good idea of fighting. I looked out the slot to see that napkins, menus, and condiments were flying madly in the wind as the hags and harpies were now fist fighting and using our food as weapons. Some bar stools went airborne and the counter and tables were rattling in the wind. Jay came over and shoved my head to the side so he could look out. I shoved his head to the side and glared at him. He glared at me and we pressed our heads together so we could look and watch together. It was oddly mesmerizing and terrifying watching it unfold as the creatures fought each other as pictures and other knickknacks started flying in the wind as it got worse. The shrieking from the hags and harpies intensified, and I covered my ears because it was beginning to get ear-splitting. There was a bright flash of light, and I closed my eyes, and then... Clanging sounds as everything that was in the air fell to the ground. I uncovered my ears and looked at Jay, who was looking confused. The harpies and hags... were gone. Loretta, Jay, and I went out to the front. It was just the three of us. Loretta's like, so where do they go? And I shrugged. I don't know. I've been here for six years, and this was the first time that something like this had happened. If we're neutral territory, do you think that some magical spell on the diner zapped them away since conflict isn't supposed to happen? Asked Loretta, sounding like she was joking. And Jay's like, yeah, that's entirely possible. All right shouted Loretta. We turned to look at her, bewildered by her outburst. I think she was more pissed off at the food going to waste, which was understandable, than at us for underreacting over the entire situation. Loretta ripped off her apron, balled it up, and threw it onto the counter. I've come to accept that there's something very strange about this diner, and I've come to accept that you two are freaky weirdos, she said. So Jay's like, I'll take that as a compliment cutting off her rant. <laughs> and then I go, me too. <laughs> Freaky weirdo was a lot nicer than what I'd been called before in high school. And then Loretta says, and I'm coming to accept that I actually love it here. I guess that makes me a freaky weirdo as well. So Jay's like, welcome to the family, smiling at our now sister in apron. Yeah, welcome to the family, sis, I said. 
We better clean up this place, though. It's like a windstorm blew through. Loretta turned off the open sign, and we got to working on cleaning up the place. It was around five when Matt and four of our other co-workers came by to start their shift. We were sitting in a booth, exhausted and drinking hellfire. We explained to Matt about what had happened with the hags and the harpies, and Matt let us go, telling us that he'll call if we're needed, but we're still supposed to go in for our night shift. Hmm. Nothing new, I suppose. 